today I'm going to be looking at Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot it's by Paul Hewson. We're also going to be looking at the mystical origins of the tarot by the same author, Paul Hewson. This tarot deck is um, very much a mix of um, Marseille and, and uh, a tailor. The elegance of the Marseille Arcana and the intuition of a tailor in one innovative work with classic styling, thanks to the work of Paul Hewson, researcher, author and extraordinary artist. And it's our 78 illustrated arcana with instructions. OK, it comes in the um, flip top lid. There we go. And here we are. We have our um, classic little white book, okay, and it is written in five languages. That's English, Italian, Spanish, French, and Dutch. The first, only the first few pages, are um, English, um, and so those are the four other languages. It's set up like the original little white books where just keywords are allocated to each card, whether they be major or minors. The backs of these cards are as follows. Okay, very pretty. Now let's have a look what we have here. That's our title card. So, first of all, we'll start off. The card stock is... Um, just your your your, your um, traditional tarot card stock, um, and is it U.S. Games? Let's just have a look. No, it's Low Scarabeo. Sorry, Low Scarabeo card stock, non-gloss. So we have the Fool. It's very Marseille looking. We don't have the magician here. We have the juggler. The female Pope. The Empress. And the female Pope is instead of the High Priestess. The Emperor. Then we have the Pope. We don't have the lovers, but we do have love. The chariot. Justice. The hermit. The wheel of fortune. We don't have strength, but we do have fortitude. That sort of, the, to me, that is saying the strength to hold things together when they're falling apart. The hanged man. Death, but death comes minus the title, as you often see in Marseille decks. Just the number 13 on the top. And we also have a signature of some sort on the top. Then we have Temperance, the Devil, the Tower, the Star, the Moon. The sun, judgment, the world. Now we move on to our miners, the ace of coins. Okay, we, as you can see, they're coins and not pentacles.
And now we come on to our courts. And our courts have names, except the knights. The knights haven't been allocated names. So the na it's the knave of coins, and his name is Lancelot. Then we have our knight. Our queen of coins is Argyne, or Argine, A-R-G-I-N-E. And our king is Alexander, king of coins is Alexander. So our courts in each suit, the knave, which would be our traditional page, the knave, the queen and the king have been allocated actual names. Then we have our ace of cups. And here we come on to the courts. Our knave in this one is Paris. Our knight. Our queen is Judith. And our king is Charlemagne. We're on to the suit of swords. And here we are at the courts for the suit of swords. Now our knave in this one is Ogier or it's O G I E R Ogier or Ogier. Our knight. Palace is our queen. And King David is our king. We are now into the suits of battens, which would be our ones in an RWS. And here we are, shortly we're now at our courts. Our knave of battens is Hector. Then we have our knight. The queen of battens is Rachel. And the king of battens is Caesar. And we have another card in this deck we have the significator that is the last card in the deck and it's been placed after the miners so let's have a look and see what it says about our significator first choose the card you're going to use as your significator this is the card you decide will represent the person who is consulting the cards or alternatively the matter which the consultant is cons the consultant is consulting the cards about. 
For this you may either use the special significator card provided with the deck or choose a court or trump to serve as a one. The design of the significator is not part of the traditional tarot but adapted from a 16th century manuscript illustrating the astrological rulership of the zodiacal signs over the parts of the human body. Oh, there we go, see? Yeah. So, there you go. That's there if you want to use it or if you don't want to use it, if you use significators at all. So that is the Fortune's Wheel Tarot. Let's move on. I actually quite like the aesthetics of the deck. Um, I, I love the, co the colour. I think it's bright and lovely. Um, getting used to names such as the female pope or love or fortitude is something that changes things for me slightly. Um, and the significator card threw me when I first saw it because I didn't expect it to be in there as an extra. So that's very interesting and it's something I'm going to look into and something I'm going to see if I can find um, any information on um, with it coming from the 16th century um, sort of manuscripts and documents as, as um, mentioned there in the little white book. Um, that's going to be something that I will find rather interesting to read. That's going to stay on my table because I intend to work with that. So that is there. The book is The Mystical Origins of the Tarot. And this is also by Paul Hewson. From ancient roots to modern usage. We might even find information on it in here, I don't know. There are two reviews written on the back of this book. And... Um, they are by Rachel Pollock and Robert Moss. So Rachel Pollock writes, 30 years ago at the very start of the modern tarot renaissance, Paul Hewson showed us how to uncover the mythical images and truths of the tarot. Now he has returned to incorporate modern scholarship into a visionary new concept for deciphering the mystery of the tarot's original um, origins and meanings. And Robert Moss writes, Paul Hewson brings to his quest for the origins of tarot the insight of an accomplished practitioner and the scholarship of a dedicated historical detective. The result is a fascinating biography of the tarot images, tracking their shifting forms and attributions from their earliest appearances. Mystical origins of the tarot will undoubtedly be a classic in the field of tarot studies. And I happen to agree. I've had a page through this and I find it very, very interesting. The origins of the tarot have been lost in the midst of time. Most scholars have guessed that the origins were in China, Egypt or India. In Mystical Origins of the Tarot, Paul Hewson has expertly tracked each symbol of the minor arcana to roots in ancient Persia and the major arcana trump cards, card images to the medieval world of mystery, miracle and morality plays. A number of tarot historians have questioned the use of the tarot as a divination, a divination tool prior to the 18th century, but the author demonstrates the symbolic meaning of the major arcana were evident from the time they first empl were employed in the mid-15th century in the popula popular divination practice of sortilege. He also um, reveals how the identities of the court, um, court cards in the Mayan Arcana were derived from a blend of pagan and medieval sources that strongly influenced their interpretation in tarot divination. Mystical Origins of the Tarot provides a detailed account of the original historical source for each card and how the card's divinatory meanings evolved from these symbols. Hewson also provides concise and practical card reading methods designed by the cartomancers of the 18th and 19th centuries and reveals the origins of the card interpretations promoted by the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and A.E. Waite. Paul Hewson has been a student of the tarot for over 40 years. He received initial esoteric training from the Society of the Inner Light in London and he later studied the methods of the Order of the Golden Dawn. He is the author of Mastering Witchcraft and The Devil's Picture Book, The Complete Guide to Tarot Cards, and he lives in Los Angeles. Now, the book looks to me like it's going to be something I'm going to read from cover to cover. 
it is split into um, five, uh, six chapters, or, or into six sections, sorry, not chapters. It's split into six sections, and under each section there comes quite a lot. For instance, just as an example, if we go back here to where we start in the contents, um, there's, there's the introduction first of playing cards and tarot decks, and in the, here we're introduced to the Mal, um, Mamluk cards, the creation of the court cards, naming of the court cards, the creation of the trump cards, tarot in the 16th century, and further developments. It then progresses to the origin of the suit signs, and then it looks at Sufis and the suit signs, the four cardinal virtues, and the four ca um, castes of ancient Persia. Section two, the origins of the trumps. So then you've got Petrarch's, um, Petrarch's E. Triombi, medieval drama, the four last things, the tale and the trumps, the tale, the trumps tale, and then we go on to section three, section four, five, and six, and there are lots of deep historical, um, inv <coughs> excuse me, pieces of information within, <coughs> excuse me, within these sections. Um, it ends up, we, we have an appendix um, of, of, uh, of historical tarot decks, where to buy your cards, where to see the originals, about the illustrations and the bibliography. Going in, there is the preface that you can read there, and it's something that I feel is going to be very, very useful. Useful in the sense that it deepens our own historical knowledge on tarot, it gives us an even further appreciation of the origins of tarot and of their original meanings, which, and combining those two, can only deepen that well of knowledge that we already have here within us from our own use and understanding and interpretation of the tarot cards. So, um, from what I'm seeing, this is going to be quite... Um, an important uh, book when it comes to knowing the history, the meaning, the symbolism and everything um, that, um, of tarot's origin um, on any tarot collector or tarot reader's bookshelf. I do think something along the lines of this book and many others that I have in my collection are very much enriching and very much um, a tool to help us grow in the world of tarot. So folks, I'm going to leave it there. I'm feeling a little bit rough today, so I'm going to put my feet up. So whatever you are doing today, I hope you're having a good day. Look after yourselves, stay safe and stay healthy and happy. Have a good day. Bye-bye.